Hey everyone, welcome to module 4.3. In this module, we're going to learn about alternative consensus models to Bitcoin's proof of work and to PBFT. I'm Michael Gord, I'm the Director of Operations for Ben and founder of MLG, a blockchain development and consulting firm based in Toronto. You can find more about me at mlgblockchain.com. In this module, you're going to learn about proof of stake, oracles, prediction markets and reputation, and hash graph. So let's start with a video of proof of stake, which is the most popular alternative consensus model to Bitcoin's proof of work. One alternative suggested to the proof of work concept is the proof of stake concept. Rather than requiring a proof to a challenge, a proof of stake system requires to show ownership of a certain amount of money, meaning the more Bitcoins you own, the more mining power you have. This eliminates the need for expensive mining rigs, as calculations are pretty simple to prove you own a certain percentage of the total amount of Bitcoins available. Just imagine that mining rigs have been replaced by coins, and if you own 1% of the total amount of Bitcoin available, you can mine 1% of the transactions. This method forces miners to have a stake in the Bitcoin network, and hopefully will defer people from abusing their mining power. Today, Bitcoin is yet to implement this proof-of-stake concept, but other altcoins like PureCoin have already implemented some kind of version of it. So now we'll talk about proof of stake. So proof of stake, as mentioned, is a popular alternative consensus method to Bitcoin's proof of work. It rewards users who have cryptographic proof of their ownership stake in the network. So the network can tell uh, which address cryptographically owns the coins that are associated to their wallet. And based on their percentage of coins, they, they receive a percentage of the, of the block. So the percent stake is the percent chance to generate a new block. So the more coins that you have, the more mining power that you have. Um, so Ethereum is considering switching to proof of stake for the following reasons. So proof of stake, because there's no expensive mining equipment, uses way less electricity and has lower latency because uh, it doesn't need to be confirmed between all of, the, all of the mining nodes. The cons are that it's less tested at scale, it has less security because there isn't millions of dollars of mining equipment securing the network, and uh, it leads to more centralization because um, someone can own coins without needing to also invest into mining equipment. So another consensus method is oracles. An oracle is a trusted third party that reports on data to nodes in a network. Oracles can be physical or digital. A government or legal entity is an example of a physical oracle and the weather API is an example of a digital oracle. Factum is an example of a blockchain that uses oracles to verify all of the data that's put on the blockchain. So Factum is a data layer on top of the Bitcoin blockchain and Factum verifies all of the data that's put onto their data layer by having a trusted legal entity in each jurisdiction that's verifying all of the data is uh, accurate to legal standards. Uh, another way to achieve consensus is prediction markets, which is a little bit of a separate idea. Uh, prediction markets use wisdom of the crowd to approximate the probability of an event. So the more people that guess the probability of an event, the higher percent chance that the average of all of the votes actually becomes the probability of the events happening. So prediction markets use reporters to reach verifiable consensus. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So the two primary prediction markets that are being developed today are Augur and Genesis. Augur is open sourced, whereas Genesis currently is not open sourced. I believe though the plan is to open source it eventually. Augur uses decentralized oracles, which is the Augur community, whereas Genesis uses centralized oracles and APIs. Um, in the Augur model, 
their oracles are the community of rep holders who report on each prediction that happens in the network. And reporters have financial incentive to be honest because if they report accurately on an event, they are rewarded with a percentage of rep tokens. And if they report dishonestly, they lose a percentage of their rep tokens. Um, and both projects are looking to be platforms with applications that are built on top of it and use the reporting data that is generated through the communities. Last is Hashgraph which is a very new consensus model. It only came out a couple months ago. It uh, uses the gossip protocol to reach verifiable consensus without voting. Um, what happens is that all nodes in the network are at all times um, telling all of the other nodes everything that they know it has happened. And based on that, the other nodes um, virtual vote on the likelihood of events happening or the certainty of events happening. Um, all it, it'll be easier to explain on the next slide. So Hashgraph has low latency, but it's very untested at scale. So where is it? The traditional blockchain is a uh, stick that is continuous. Um, the Hashgraph blockchain is or distributed ledger is continuously changing and each um, each node is constantly relaying the chain of events that they believe has happened and from that virtual voting approximates um, what actually happened the current state of the hash graph so uh, Hashgraph is very untested, but it's a new consensus protocol and it's interesting to consider because uh, of how quickly distributed computing protocols are advancing. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions or if you'd like to help me improve this module, uh, reach out to me in the Blockchain Education Network Slack. And these are the credits and references. So thank you very much.